Okay. Then let's talk about the content, the more of the content. A little refresher, right? we're talking about information visualization and we went over hierarchical data representations, graphs, n-dimensional data, scatter plots, icons, channel faces. Now we're going to look at a little bit of parallel coordinates, right? That's what we started last time. And we stopped last time with the with the parallel coordinates. With the parallel coordinates construction. Everybody remembers. Now that we've seen the parallel coordinates construction algorithm or the the way they are made, we can understand this slide better. The, so the star glyphs, remember in Cartesian coordinates, the axes meet at a right angle, 90 degrees. In parallel coordinates, the axes never meet, they're, they're parallel. In star coordinates, they're in between. So they're not 90 degrees, and they're not infin infinite or whatever there, you know, something like 45 degrees or 30 degrees between axes. So all the axes intersect at the middle and then they they emanate outwards. Right? That's what a star glyph is. So if you can imagine all the parallel coordinate axes meeting in the middle and then a polyline joining them around, then you get a star glyph. So that you now that makes hopefully that makes sense. And look, there are this is the old fashioned. These are the old fat. Well, these are standard parallel coordinates, and these are the star glyph versions of those. Right. So this this guy has been turned into the star glyph. So the properties are n parallel axes. Every axis stands for a, a data attribute or a column in a spreadsheet if you're thinking about assignment one. And the axes are scaled to their min max intervals. That's a that's a comment about normalization, by the way, scale to the min max intervals. Right. And every polyline represents one tuple, data tuple, or one row in a spreadsheet. Every polyline. It, it joins up each, each thing. And this, this is a little bit messy. Of, this, this example is a little bit messy. But if you're interested, it's, it's actually a set of times. Well, this is from an experiment of people looking at texts and trying to understand how people looked at papers and where they spent their time. What were they looking at? Like, were they looking at the title page or the page two? Like, or were they looking at the texts? Were they looking at pictures? Were they looking at figures? How long did they spend looking at page one? How long did they spend looking at the conclusions page? and so on, and trying to understand how people spent their time looking at papers, PDF research papers. And what is this good for? Well, it's good for high dimensional data. So data with, a, you know, five or more dimensions. But what can you actually see from these? So one of the ideas is to look at relationships between variants. So you typically have direct relationships 
indirect relationships between variants or no relationship. Usually you have some degree of one of these three things. So this is the car example, by the way. So this is this is one of the axes, one of the attributes of cars, and this is one of the attributes of all the engine size and the number of cylinders and the horsepower and so on. So from this axis, I can see like as 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 we go up, a small value here is generally connected to high values on my neighboring axis and vice versa. High values and on this axis generally descend down into small values on the neck on the adjacent axis. Anybody want to guess what kind of relationship that is? That's right, it's an indirect or inverse relationship. As one value goes up, another value goes down. And that's very obvious here. It's very obvious. In the Cartesian, anybody know what that looks like in Cartesian coordinates? Yeah, the slope going down, that's right. A direct relationship in Cartesian coordinates is a slope going upwards. Right, from left to right. In parallel coordinates, it's it's not quite well. It, you know, it, it's arguably the same. So here I can see a direct direct relationship between two axes. As one as the city miles per gallon goes up, the highway miles per gallon also goes up. So that's a direct relationship when there aren't so many lines crossing. But any time you see these big slopes and lines crossing, that's an inverse relationship. Any time you see a lot of lines going or edges going straight across, that's a direct relationship. And then sometimes you just get noisy edges, like where there's no obvious pattern, and that's a sign where there might be no relationship. Problem. In this case, what is the position of the axis? Yes, yes. So we're going to give uh, some some feedback about that. So what you see here does depend on the order of the axes, but there are ways to address that, right? and I think I'm going to talk about that, you know, in, the, in future slides and things like that. Here's another challenge, right, when you have too many polylines. If you're not using color, right, that's, that's what you can see as well, which is not very nice. <laughs> so one of the challenges Carlo mentioned is the order of the axes. Another challenge is large data sets, like how do you apply this to larger, larger data sets. So one way to address that is through something called brushing. Brushing just means selection, selecting a range of data. As soon as I use color, by the way, it makes it easier to track edges as they go across. In this example, the user has brushed this interval, its pressure, and they've said, Please show me all the polylines passing through that range of pressure values. And then all of the polylines are highlighted in purple and pass through there. So I can see that these polylines are the same ones as these down here, even though they are several axes apart. And they also help you filter on very large data sets. I'm actually going to give a demo of this, like a, a you know, a, an animated demo. And this is also some kind of clustering applied to the coordinates or polylines. Here you can see this is like the standard. Here you can see the polylines, the opacity of the polylines is being varied. 
so that when there are lots of overlapping polylines, they show up as bright bands in, in this, this box. So you can vary the opacity to help deal with the very large overplotting polylines. You can also add histograms to those to those large parallel coordinates plots. Everybody remembers what a histogram is and should it counts the number of some of occurrences. So in this case, these bars indicate the number of polylines that intersect each axis within this range. The number of bars span or width. So here we have very few intersections, and here we have lots of intersections. Here we have the most intersections. These are standard histograms applied to all the axes. These are angular histograms, so they add an angle, an average angle. So I can say that for all the polylines intersecting this axis, the average angle slants downwards. Right, to help us to help us understand those large data sets. And we can see a video, a demo video of this in, in, in on YouTube. Here's, here's a video demo of the of the angular histograms. We won't watch the whole thing, but this just gives you some idea. Oh, it's a little bit I think the YouTube version will be a little bit clearer. And usually this type of thing is it's implemented in software and you can interact with the, the design. Right? You can brush it, so select subsets and highlight those polylines. You can interactively rearrange the order of the axes. So if you want two axes next to each other, you can just slide one across next to it. These are the angular histograms, and then the user is selecting subsets to visualize, and they're turning on and off the histograms. So you can turn them on and off, and the white lines are the original polylines, the original poly polyline here. So an or brush just means two brushes being combined. So they have selected this range, and the user then selects this range. And then they also select this range, and they combine them in an or fashion. So any polyline that passes, passes through this brush, this brush, or that brush. And the user has control over the, the opacity of both the histogram bars and the polylines themselves. This is an and combination of brushes. So that means a polyline has to pass through multiple brush intervals in order to be rendered. Right? Not just one, but all of them. So now the brush polylines are rendered in red, in this example. So the user has control over the, the color of the polylines can be rendered in. That's the user adjusting the opacity. I'm waiting for something, one of the features to be described. I don't know what it's described. But I think you get the idea. Right? This is the approach, this is a, a, an alternative for a, a 
approach for when you have too many polling lines that overlap in screen space. Right? You can add these angular histograms on top to get an overview of the data, an overview before you filter. Here is another one. This is showing different kinds of brushing techniques. That means, brushing means selection. So if you want to select subsets of your quality lines in, in the parallel coordinates block, these are some enhanced or let's say more advanced ways of doing that, selecting subsets or brushing all the, the coordinate plots. Usually, if you want to brush polylines, the standard way is just to clip on one, or as you saw in the previous demo, to draw a rectangle, and all the polylines going through there will get highlighted, or to draw an edge along the axis. Those are kind of the standard ways to brush in parallel coordinates. And this video describes more advanced ways to brush in parallel coordinates. And it's applied to a real data set that we could have used for assignment one. It's call center data. So one of our projects is we work with a company that collects call center data, every event that occurs inside a call center. And they asked us if we could help them make some sense out of that data. All those calls, you go through an IVR system. That's when you choose your different menu options, and then you get put on hold. Right? And then you talk to an agent, maybe, unless you hang up. This is a brushing pattern where the user just clicks on the, on the pattern they're looking for, and that's how the selection is made. Right? So this is the user just clicking from left to right and saying, please show me all of the polylines that exhibit this behavior or follow this pattern. And then it, it comes up as a pattern, as a polyline pattern on the plot. And the user can move that pattern around wherever they want. They can slide it up and down, or they can push it back and forth. We can complement the plot with these, these are distributions. Right, so those are, those are histograms again, but they're smooth histograms that show the distribution of polylines on any given axis. And that's the user sliding that, that brush around. So we can see the polylines. The data looks very strange down here because it's all pushed, pushed down at the bottom of the axis. So the user is now creating a brush that tries to address this problem of all the data hiding down here and read like redistributing it. Let's see that. These are the these are two brushes, so one here and one here. And the user is combining them together to say, can you show me all the polylines that pass through this pattern or this pattern? And by the way, this is the XMDV tool. This is one of the tools you can use for assignment one as a parallel coordinates visual design. Right? And so the old, the old style of brushing is used in the XMDB tool. Any questions about that? You can watch the, the whole video uh, on 
the date of his YouTube channel. It has a voiceover that's explaining everything that's happening in the, in the <coughs> animation. It's nice to see some some live demos, so to speak, of, of these things when somebody's actually using them. And you can see the interaction. The only way you can see the interaction is if you can have an animation in a video. You can't see interaction in a static slide. And this is a real world example. So this is call center data. And it's with a real company called QPC. And they are looking for experts in data visualization. If you have if you have good knowledge about data visualization, they are very interested to hire you. They have not succeeded in finding anybody yet. Okay, we'll stop that example. It looks like an interesting example, doesn't it?